Hello and welcome to the Inferno Nature Preserve. My name is Eli Weisenfeld, and today I will be taking you on a tour through the many stops of the Inferno. Hopefully we'll get to see some of its more colorful inhabitants. We'll start here in the dark woods. Be please be quiet, our tour begins in the dark woods. By far the most regal accommodations that the Inferno has to offer. We'll be doing a quick tour here. Ah, I think I spot some characters right over here. Ah, yes. Yes, we must be careful as we observe these animals. These are two inhabitants of the Dark Woods. Indeed, the one on your right is uh, one Edgar, as he is more of a pushover character with a good heart, but doesn't really add anything. On the left, we have Hareton, a creature that is weak and underdeveloped, but is still trying his best to improve himself and fly. And, in fact, if we go up here... Ah, yes! Right here, it seems, we have another inhabitant, this being young Catherine, or Kathy. As you can see by her beautiful plumage, this is a character who is attempting to fly and show her freedom and escape, perhaps, into the realm of heaven. And I do believe if we look to our... Yes, again, one more entirely different animal. This is the character of Linton. And as you look at his eyes, you can see sadness and frailty there. Perhaps he too yearns for freedom, but is unable to reach it. We will now move along on our tour throughout. Ah, but the light is drawing us upwards. Ah, moving right along. Ah, I can't believe it. There in the light, could it be? It is. It is. We have perchanced upon Sonia herself, depicted here as a majestic unicorn. Sonia is truly a character with a heart of gold, despite her harsh lot in life and her unfortunate possession. You can see her here as she is enveloped in light. Perhaps she could escape from the inferno entirely and transgress up into Paradiso itself. Ah. Here we have Mademoiselle Reese, a protective avian creature. As you can see, she is protecting her brethren over there. Mademoiselle Reese, with her over-encompassing wings and her large mouth, shows that she can both be protective and gossipy, too. She is a member of the Dark Woods and is often considered the mother of the Dark Woods. Uh, moving right along, we find quite the inseparable pair. On our right is a Miss Janie, and on our left is a Mr. Tea Cake. The two of them were lovers in life, and together they are united once again in the dark woods. Janie is shown here as a lioness, a fiercely independent cat who thinks for herself and definitely can fend for herself. And on the left is Tea Cake being shown here as a medium-sized bear, both protective and compassionate, and able to hold his own as well. We are almost finished with our time here in the dark woods, but before we leave, I would like to introduce you to the one and only Lolita, uh, shown here as a as a cat, uh, an independent creature who thinks for herself again, much like Janie. However, she is also a child, a smaller cat, and more domesticated, as the, as shown by the little blue bow around her neck. And oh dear, uh, as we leave. Ah, yes, it seems I was correct. Trapped in the door of the dark woods is Ebon, much like she was trapped by men in her life for all of her life. She's continuously trapped in the dark woods. However, her beauty is easily shown and easily viewed by all who see her. I'd like to thank you for joining me in the dark woods. We will now continue on to the vestibule. Ah, yes, welcome back to our tour of the uh, Inferno Nature Preserve Society. Ah, uh, yes, over here we have the vestibule of those waiting to be judged. Ah, uh, it seems we have the delight of seeing two of its inhabitants today. Uh, right here is the turtle Robert, a shy, timid creature who may find deep emotion and deep compassion, but is unwilling to show it, and will be characterized more by his longevity and what he does after events, rather than during. And over here, we have the pug Charles, perhaps a little blank-faced and a little puggish in nature, but altogether a good-hearted creature who has done nothing wrong, but nothing especially good either in life. 
somewhat inept, but not wrongfully so. Both of these creatures are not evil, but are also yet to be judged. Before we enter the circle of lust behind this door here, I'd like to make just a quick few announcements to my viewers. The first is, if you look down there, you will in fact see the first circle of hell known as Limbo, but we will not be entering there. The reason being that there is no member of Limbo who would be especially conducive to our tour. Secondly, I must warn you, while the first two places on our tour have been somewhat charming, perhaps a little sparse, but altogether nothing too disturbing, Lust is when hell truly begins to be the place it is, told, it is talked about. So I must warn my viewers now, once you enter Lust, you're in for the whole time. Now with that being said, welcome to Lust. <sighs> it's just as bad as I thought. As you can see, the roaring tempest above us swirls all of this around and makes a horrible mess of the place. I will have to cut my recording here and hope I will be able to single out someone and get back to you on that point. Here we have our first character, Catherine from Weathering Heights. This character, much like her stuffed counterpart, is impulsive and has power, but doesn't realize how much. And once she begins to use it, she realizes that she has no control over this power. She's also indecisive, unable to make big decisions, and is torn in two by the needs of her society and the needs of her own heart. Our next character is a fearsome tiger. This is Emma Bovary from Madame Bovary. A fierce creature, but also a lustful one. Emma is constantly driven by her romantic feelings for the men in her life, and like a tiger, she seeks to get what she wants at any cost. And to complete our time in lust, we have two characters from the book The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow. On our right, you can see Uni, or Junior, and on our left, you can see, in fact, Belly. Junior is shown here as a monkey, a sexually active and promiscuous creature who, for lack of a better term, is unable to keep it in his pants. And over here, we have Belly, uh, known in the book as Oscar and Lola's mother, and in her story we see her as also a sexually active character whose almost, her actions are almost dictated by her romantic feelings for the men in her life, and as you can see by the way she is facing, she's a downtrodden creature, unable to progress in life and unable to move on. As we transition out of lust, we will be moving directly into gluttony at this point, and then directly into greed. We have only one member of each group, and our glutton today is being shown as Marmeladoff, or shown here in this dog-like figure. Notice how he is very large and also hidden beneath the shape of his fur. It shows that Marmeladoff is a shaggy character, covered in layers and shells. His large size also is an indicator of the number of vices he partakes in, and of course, of his overall large personality. Transitioning further down into hell, we come across Circle 4, known as Greed or the Avaricious, and that is being shown here by Jody, the, who is being shown as a lion-like character for his possessive nature, trying to control Janie, the, aform the aforementioned lioness in the dark woods. Welcome back now, we have entered the fifth circle of hell. Below us, we can see the river sticks soaked with blood. But before we see the combatants there, locked in endless battle, we first turn to, the so to those on the side, also known as the slop bull. Coming in on our left is Cash, shown here as a beaten and downtrodden dog, unable to express itself and obviously in some sort of pain. And on his right is another lion, but unlike our previous travels with Jody, this is a smaller, more apathetic lion, and this is in fact Leonce from The Awakening. Transitioning down into the sticks, we see our four combatants locked in battle with each other. We'll have to keep a good distance away, but hopefully we'll be able to capture it with our zoom function. Over here we have the shark Trujillo locked in combat with the buffalo of Heathcliff. And over here we have the proud and regal Katarina from uh, Crime and Punishment preparing to battle with the fish known as Addy. 
This concludes our time in Circle 5. Oh, it seems, ladies and gentlemen, in our rush to leave, we missed, perhaps, the most apathetic person in all of Circle 5. This is Marceau the Sloth. As you can see, he has no interest in the goings-on of, of the others in this circle. He is completely isolated and not at all interested in what happens around him. Ah, uh, ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to welcome you to our next stop on the Hell Tour. We are now in the circle of heretics. Now, as you can see, we have two of our most valued members in a heated argument. On the right is Stephen Dedalus, and on the left is Homas. Um, the two of them are, are in a deep argument. As you can see, a bottle of Advil is kept right by their side in case any unwitting passerby attempts to listen to their intellect for too long. We are now moving into the final three stops on our tour. We're now in Circle 7 in the Forest of Suicides, and here we can see Edna Pontellier. She has chosen this form here of a flying creature but not a bird. It shows her expression, it shows the expression of her yearning for freedom and to become like the bird symbolized in her story but is unable to fully transform into that kind of creature. We'll now be transitioning downwards into circles 8 and 9. Through that entryway to our right, we will find the truly heinous characters in the Nature Preserve. I warn you once more that this is not for the faint of heart. As we enter circle 8, I find it necessary to light the way, as the darkness, as you can see, is much more complete in this circle. So we have, you, we have turned on the flashlight, but we must be more quiet, as these creatures do not like to be disturbed. Over here, we have eternally wrapped together Rodolphe and Leon, the two seducers of Emma Bovary. Over here, ah good, I was hoping to meet these characters, the puffed-out Lucian and the two-faced Svidrigailov. Down over here, locked in eternal conflict, are the characters of Humbert Humbert and Claire Quilty. And up here in the top, surveying it all, the false prophet Raskolnikov. His many layers and many indecisive thoughts portrayed on his skin as clear as day. Only one circle remains. Treasure. Here is the entrance to Circle 9. There are two traitors here I hope to find today. Ah, I think we have. First up here is Mrs. Turner from Their Eyes Are Watching God, a traitor to her own people. Her wasp description is in reference to a type of wasp that breeds an army of zombie caterpillars. But seriously, that's true, actually, look that up. And down here, the greatest traitor of all, it is Ants, from As I Lay Dying. Not only is he slothful and apathetic, not only is he greedy, but he's also a traitor to his entire family and his wife. A dog. But nonetheless, an awful creature. I thank you so much for joining me in my tour of the Inferno Nature Preserve. Please come back sometime. Hopefully you'll still just be a visitor.